Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Let's just say Shabbat Shalom roll out. Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom! Shalom! Shabbat Shalom! Good Shabbos. Good Shabbos. Shabbat Shalom! Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> Shabbat Shalom. <laughs> I had said. That's Genesis 28. That's what we're in. Okay. Yes. Oh, yes. We got to do the blessing before we read the Torah. Thank you, Judge. Barakuch Yehovah Hamborach, Baruch Yehovah Hamborach, Leram Vaev, Baruch Atayu Ba Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Asher Baharbanu Bikol Ha'avi, Ratzalayu Atoato, Baruch Atayu Ba'adu Tin Ha'torah, Bless the Lord, the blessed one. The blessing is the Lord, the blessed one for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. Thank you, Abba. We are going to feast on your word. Amen. Amen. yet said. That's uh, that's the name of the Torah portion. Well, we welcome all you in Facebook Genesis. land, as well as us who are here. Uh, may you be blessed richly. Amen. We are blessed. We've been in the presence of the Lord. We're still in the presence of the Lord. May we not leave the presence of the Lord yeah. ever. <laughs> Amen. Okay. I can dig it. We are believers. <laughs> I was sharing with everybody Hallelujah. at the beginning. We are Maccabees. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Former military understand this. <laughs> we are warriors. Okay, Maccabees. It comes from the first letters of the following words: Michamocha Adonai. Who is like unto you, O Lord? Who is comparable to you? Okay, a Maccabee, meaning also hammer. We are going to put the hammers down on the enemy. Yes. Okay, we set the standards. We are on the offensive against the works of the enemy. Woohoo! Okay, we are not on the defensive. No, no. He is our defense. Right. Yes. We are not on yes. the defense. We are yes. Amen. We're going to take the promise. Yes. We are going to believe the Lord all the way. We're not making this up. This is out of our spirit. Okay, we are headed into Hanukkah. Okay, in about what? 13 days? Or 12, yeah. 13 days? Yeah, more or less. We're headed to Hanukkah on December 10th. Okay. What is Hanukkah? It means rededication. It has nothing to do with light. It has nothing to do with candles. A tradition that came later to try to combat the children's attachment, Jealousy. their friends' attachment, Jewish children's friends being attached to Christmas and getting gifts. And the Jews came up with a way to try to get gifts each of the eight days. Okay. But that none of that, that's all traditional, none of it is from the Bible. Actually, the story of the Maccabees is actually in the Bible. It's talked about, it's prophesied in the book of Daniel that, that uh, there's a prophecy about uh, King, I should say, yeah, he was King Alexander, right? Alexander the Great of Greece. He didn't cause a problem for Israel. It was his generals, one of his generals, down the line, a few generations down the line, not that far, they they came in and someone like by the name of Antiochus came in, Antichrist type of person, false messiah type of person. Okay, it was foretold that one of the four generals was going to do things against Israel. It said it in Daniel, and it happened. Mm -hmm. The story of Hanukkah comes out of that. They tried to force the Greek ways upon the Jews. They were trying to steal the soul of the God of Israel from the, from the Jewish people by saying, forsake God, forsake the Torah, worship, put it, worship a pig, uh, sacrifice a pig on the altar of God, okay? Just uh, don't circumcise your children. It's, it's forbidden for you to study Torah. We got all these stories about dreidels and spinning tops <laughs> yes. from, from trying to, you know, 
to recall what happened. Okay. You know, try to recall the persecution that happened of the believers, the believers among the Jews before Messiah came. Mm -hmm. Now, why do I say? I, I've been telling everybody this morning already, so they're hearing this a second time, praise the Lord, but you all need to hear this out there. Okay, it's got to get out there. That we are the Maccabees today. Okay? Because we have a similar battle. Okay? I, I know, I said this is Vayetza, we're going to come back to Vayetza, but you all need to hear this, so it's going to be like a double teaching here. Okay? Uh, there was three groups of people. There was the Maccabees who, who said, we will not bow to idols. We will not stop studying Torah. We will not stop doing righteous things according to God's word, following his, his, his commandments, following his instructions, following his appointed times. We're not going to sacrifice a pig on the altar. Okay, and they were the Maccabees. They were standing up with God, and many times they lost their lives in the process. They were the righteous people. And then there was a lot of Jews that were afraid out of fear, or even some Jews that didn't care for their own faith. And, and they compromised. And they said, yeah, we'll worship a pig. And, and they were promised all this stuff from the Greeks to, to give them all these physical things. That's what we have to watch out during this time of the year, that physical temptations are ever before us. The sails are on, right? There's a, a bunch of things. There's an attempt to steal our soul at this time, of course, in a way, I have to be thankful for COVID because it's put limitations on, on any of that. <laughs> That's one way you can be thankful for it. I didn't see okay. that. But uh, all I could say is, is that, that, that those group of people that were compromised amongst the believers or compromisers, those Jews who gave in, they were called Hellenists, followers of the Greek ways. And then the third group, they, those were... The, the people who were the Greeks. So you had the Maccabees, those on fire and zealous for God, standing up for God, and you had the ones who were compromising out of either fear of persecution or, or they, were, they didn't care about their own religion or their own belief. And then you had the Greeks. Okay. Well, guess who's around today? I do not mind bringing it up. Okay. For all those who are here, because this is prophetic, hopefully they won't remove this video, okay? <laughs> but anyhow, let's throw on you guys, okay? This is prophetic, okay? We have President Trump and all those that support his standard, him. In a sense, he's following God. He's bringing this country back to freedom, freedom of religion, freedom of the way we're supposed to be, to make a choice for God or not based on our free will, okay? To choose what's right. He is choosing a, to be against abortion, against the killing and murder of babies, which is really rooted in idolatry, okay? The worship of Moloch and Baal, okay? Those who stand against evil, okay? All those that are righteous in the church that are standing up and, and standing against the evil, of what the Democrats are preaching and doing and want to do to destroy everything. Our freedom, they are like an antichrist. They are like a false messiah. They are. Amen. Okay? Yes. So they are like the Greeks. So you have the righteous, those who are standing up with God and believing God for the, the false, uh, the, the cheating that is going on in the election. It is very clear. Okay, the, all the deception that went on that, were, that was conducted by today's Greeks, which are the Democrats, okay, it's going to be exposed, okay, it's going to be brought out, okay, but right now we're in a battle. They think they, they won, just as uh, the, the Jews in the time of the Maccabees. The Maccabees were overwhelmingly, they had a, a few people that stood up against a large Greek army. And so are the Democrats, like a large Greek army right now. But you know what? There were a few people that stood up for God. But there were those that compromised too. And we have Republicans that are compromising with the Greeks or with the Democrats. And we have Republicans, uh, we have believers that are saying 
let's just get in. It's the same story. So we are, if you're standing with God, you're standing with righteousness. And if you're standing with everything being restored, everything being exposed, okay, then you're on the right side. You are on that could be today. Okay, so that, that's really important to understand this battle. But guess what? They're going to choose all the electors, supposedly, right? On December 14th, guess what that is? Hanukkah. Hanukkah means rededication. Why don't we say rededication or Hanukkah? Rededication. Rededication or even dedication. It's the same word. Okay, so let's go. December 10th to December 18th is Hanukkah. It was when we remember the victory of the Maccabees, a few people that overcame the Greek army, that overcame the, the, the overwhelming odds against them. And they took back Jerusalem, and they took back the temple, and they took back the, uh, the altar. Now, the altar was damaged, so they had to destroy it. It was damaged, it was defiled by the Greeks, and they had to destroy it, and they rebuilt the altar and dedicated it, and that's where we get Hanukkah from. That's the story of Hanukkah. And I know I'm a bit early. I know what it's like, but uh, we're like 12 days early, 13 days early here. But you need to know this because this is what we're in already. We're in that month. We're in that time. Okay? So you need to know this. Okay? So all of you out there, I don't know if anybody's going to hear this. I'm hoping that we'll spread this. Spread this. When I post this video up on YouTube, you need to spread it. Spread it around. <laughs> the story of Hanukkah is happening again now. Mm -hmm. And we're participants in it. Mm -hmm. You're Maccabees. We're Maccabees. And we're standing up. Even against overwhelming odds, we will beat back the Greeks. Just yes. like the ancient Maccabees. Yes. In this case, you, unfortunately, I hate to call them. Maybe not all Democrats, no. okay? No. Maybe not all the Greeks were bad either. Right. Okay? The leadership. It's just the leadership right. and the power. Yes, the establishment. Okay, so that's the Hanukkah part. <laughs> now, if I miss anything, you can all fill, fill everybody in later. Okay, but I just want you all to see, this has to go out. People need to hear this. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Amen. But anyhow, I thought about that when we were crazy. I felt like the Lord said, you need to share this. So maybe the Lord is going to spread the message. Amen. Okay. Every year I always tell people we're, we're the Maccabees, but this year we actually have yes. a little live picture of it. Yes, yeah. yes, <laughs> yes. I love God. He's so wonderful. He is, everything he does is by these times and seasons. We're just like, you know, a lot of people just don't know, you know, because they don't follow the Jewish calendar. They don't follow the right scriptures and stuff. So, all right, back to Vayetze. Okay, Vayetze means to go out, okay, to go forth. Yatsa, its root word is Yatsa. Okay, and, uh, it's a, uh, it's like let's go to the to the portion. It's in Genesis 28. Yaakov departed from Beersheba and he went toward Haran, and encountered. Now get this. Encountered. It says he encountered the place and spent the night there, because the sun had set. He took from the stones of the place and he placed them around his head and he laid down in that place. Now, if anybody was reading, do you ever wonder? What, what is it with the wording of this? It's like he said, he departed from Beersheba. Beersheba means the well of the sevenfold oath, so uh, an oath of promise, and he went toward Haran. Okay, Haran means mountain. So he was going for a mountaintop experience. It's like he was going heavenly. Okay, so I want you to think of Yaakov. He's running from his brother who threatened his life in last week's portion. His brother Asaph, and he's going toward Iran. He knows where he's going. He's going to get a wife of, among his his relatives, and it's his, his his mother's brother. Okay, they were, he was advised to go to Haran. but he's looking for God. He really is. I believe there was a lot of fear in him. Okay, Yaakov, who would later become Israel, and it says he encountered a place. Now, 
Really, I, I'm going to go into a little bit of side commentary here. Okay. Imagine you are, you've been told by your father, something happened to me on this mountain. And your grandfather told you something happened on this mountain. There was a mountain, okay? And on this mountain, Yitzchak, I'm sorry, Avraham nearly offered me up. This is Yitzchak telling his son Yaakov and his son Esau, Esau, okay? He nearly offered me up. But then something happened, and God provided a ram, and, and it was caught by its horns and a crown of thorns. <laughs> I like that rhyme, okay? But anyhow, uh, so, so, you know, Abraham, my dad, left. My Abba left, and I had started to have an encounter with the Lord at this place, Mount Moriah, okay? And he told then when they were children. And Yaakov remembered, he said, you know what? I, I want to have an encounter with God. So he goes off to that place. That same mountain, Mount Moriah, which later, by the way, would become the place where both temples were rebuilt. And not only that, it would be the place where Yeshua would be going toward the cross. <clears throat> At that place. Same place. It's the place that Abraham or Abraham nearly offered up his son and God stayed him because it was a type and shadow of Messiah. So he goes to the place looking for a miracle, looking for an encounter with God. And this is what happened. The son had said, and he took from the stones of that place and he placed them around his head and he laid down in that place and he dreamed and there appeared a ladder. Now, this is not an ordinary ladder. The Hebrew word is sulam. And a ladder, it says here, a ladder that was set earthward, earthward, sorry, earthward, word, and its top was reaching heavenward. And there appeared angels of God ascending and descending on it. Okay, it was a spiral ladder. It was not a straight ladder, as we know. It was spiral. It was like a cycle going up, and he saw angels going up and down on it. Okay, and by the way, in the temple, both temples, both temples had spiral ladders on each side. I think two sets on each side. I, I know there was one set. And as you went up, there's three levels. As you went up those spiral ladders, it got bigger as you went bigger, more space. Lines. Okay, it was a type and shadow of the three heavens. The one on earth, the one, the space, and the one above, above the expanse, above it. That's where God is. Three heavens, okay? It's a type and shadow. God wants us to ascend. Ladder, I shared this, I shared this way back in, when we were studying in Genesis. The ladder literally means to go and, and go up toward God, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to think, uh, what was the words that I used? It's coming out of darkness into light. The latter literally means like coming out of darkness, climbing toward light. Did you know that the night, the word for night or evening is edit, and it literally means to climb up, to climb out of the darkness into the light. So everything about ladder is climbing out of the darkness into the light, okay? So he sees a ladder. And there appeared angels of God ascending and descending on it. Verse 13 of chapter 28 of Genesis. And then Yehovah was standing over him. Literally, God himself, Yehovah was standing over him. <laughs> and he said, I am Yehovah, God of Abraham, your father, and God of Yitzchak, the ground which you were lying upon. To you will I give it, and to your descendants. Your offspring shall be as a dust of the earth, and you shall burst forth westward. By the way, I was thinking about that. I was looking. Westward is to the left. Okay. Those of you are burst out at the left. <laughs> Think about that. And eastward. Okay. And northward and southward. And you will be blessed through you, all the families of the earth, and through your offspring. Indeed, I am with you, and I will guard you in all places that you go. And I will return you to the soil, for I will not leave you until then when I have done that which I have spoken concerning you. You hear that? 
where God has finished everything that he's done concerning you all out there, he's not going to leave you. Okay? Yaakov awoke from his sleep and said, Surely Jehovah is present in this place, and I did not know. And he became frightened. He had the fear of the Lord in him and said, How awesome is this place. There, this is none other than the house or the temple of God, and this is the gate of the heavens. Uh -huh. yeah. Yaakov arose early in the morning, and he took the stone which he placed around his head. By the way, the Hebrew word for a stone is Evan. And if you break down Evan, it means the father, Ev, then the son, the father and the son. Uh -huh. So he, he took the stone that he placed around his head and set it up as a monument and he poured oil on it. You know what that word is? Sheven. Okay? And when you put oil and you anoint something, the word anoint, okay, it means Mashiach. <laughs> he took the rock, which means the Father and the Son, and he anointed and made it Messiah. Okay? And he said, this is not, not other than Messiah. He will rule and reign from his throne in his house. This is his house. Okay, and, and that's what he was doing, anointing the rock. And he called the name of that place Bethel, meaning house of God. However, Luz was the former name of the city originally. And Yaakov vowed a vow, and he said, If God will be with me, and he will guard me on this way that I am going, and he will give me bread to eat and clothes to wear, and I will return in peace to this house, to the house of my father, Jehovah will be to me God. That this stone, which I have set up as a monument and anointed as Mashiach, shall become the house of God. And all that you will give me, I tithe it. I shall repeatedly tithe it to you. Okay, so let me just stop there real quick. Okay, I want you to think about this. He had an encounter with God. That, is, that should be our desire for an encounter with God. Because you know what? When you have an encounter with God, I think we had a good encounter today. But Amen. A powerful yes. encounter with the Lord, it will take you through anything. Yes. Wow. It will take you through anything and everything that comes. Okay? And, and, that's, and, and you will have a relationship, an ongoing relationship with yes. God. Amen. So Yaakov lifted his feet. We're in chapter 29, verse 1. And went toward the land of the people of the east. Okay, so let's go on in our notes. Okay, the word, by the way, in Hebrew, as you see in the middle of page one, is paga, which is uh, Genesis 20, 10 or 11, is the encounter. Okay, a place of encounter. Okay, and it says he saw the place. Okay, now. The word is he stood up, literally. This is, this is the root of, of the word place. This is not a, a usual thing here. The word place, he's, Josh has it up there. Okay. Makob, it means standing place. And, and literally, the root word of it is to rise, to arise, meaning to stand up, to rise up. Listen, we are going to stand for the Lord. We are not going to sit down. Amen. We are going to stand up. That's what we are called to do, to stand for the Lord. Yes. This also means to resurrect. Yes, it's connected to the word resurrection. Remember when Yeshua went to resurrect that little girl, he said to Kumi Ali, he was in Hebrew. He was saying, rise up, little girl. Okay. So anyhow, let's, uh, let's go down a little bit. Yaakov left a land that meant promise of rest or peace to a place that meant mountains. Haran, where he was going to, meant its meaning is mountains. He was going from the place of the covenant to the heavenly realm. So think about it. His whole travel, from the time he left to the time he arrived, is to go up toward God, to go mountains, to go north, to go up. He was looking for God. Even the meanings of the places that he went, our pursuit of God should never stop. We're always going northward. We're always going 
and you know, even Abraham was not happy where he was at. He said, I, he was look, it says in the scripture, he was looking for a city whose builder and maker was God. That's what we're doing. Just for, for your information, for those of you who are online, if you want a copy of the teaching, just send me an email at kolharuach at gmail.com. Kolharuach, haruach spelled K-O-L-H-A-R-U-A-C-H -H at gmail.com. Okay, just a little side note there. Okay, uh, so, you know, I, I already kind of covered all that stuff, all the notes, okay? The dreaming of a ladder. So let's go a little bit further down. Go to page four. Now, remember, I had just read to you that he, he said, Yaakov vowed the vow, remember? Let's look at that. We're on the bottom of page four. In chapter 28, 20 to 22. Elohim, if Elohim will be with me, intimacy, there's an intimacy, he, and he will guard me on this way that I'm going, that means keep, watch over me, teach me his ways, okay, pay attention to this, because this is our life, and he will give me bread to eat, in other words, the word, eat Torah, which is the word that is bread from heaven, clothes to wear, he will be my covering, my safety, my salvation, and I will return to, in peace to the house of my father, peace within, peace within that passes all understanding. And Jehovah will be to me God. He will always be my God and only him will I worship. That's another way of saying what, what Yaakov vowed to God. And look, there were six of them. That's earthly things. This is what but I will do with my God while I'm in the earth. Okay? This is what God has called us to. So are we all vowing to God these six things? That we He will be, we will be intimate with the Lord. We will learn His ways. We will, we will eat His word. We will allow His covering and His salvation, His blood to cover us, and we will have the peace inside of us. And we will not live off of the eyes and ears that we things we see and hear. Okay, and He will be with us, and we will only worship Him. Okay. That's the promise that Yaakov made. He, and basically, in verse 22, he says, Yaakov said, if these things are done for me, then this stone, which I have set up as a monument, shall become the house of God. And all that you will give me, I will tithe it. I shall repeatedly tithe it to you. Now, what he's saying here is, basically, that my home will be God. And I will anoint his Messiah. I will worship his Messiah. That's what that's what was going on here. Beneath the surface, it's all about Yeshua, Jesus on the side, and knowing Him, and walking with Him, and let Him build us up as His house, and be in His house. By the way, the word for monument is the word matzava. It means pillar, stump. Take, and it's root word, not sav, to take a stand. Again, a different word for stand. We are to take a stand. And that is a part of being in his house and his him being in us and our worshiping him. We take a stand. We are not weak. Listen, when you become a believer in Yeshua, mm -hmm. you are you are strong. You don't know how strong you are. We are powerful. He's given us all authority. We have authority to cast out demons. Yes. We have authority to, to trample on scorpions and snakes. That means yes. our enemy. Yes. Okay, we are, are given authority over the enemy. Yes. We are we are the one that he already took his power away. Yeshua took the power of Satan away. Yes. Okay, we now have that. He gave it to us. It is you now have the authority over Thank the enemy. You. Yes. That's the authority we have. It's very great. It's not yes. small. Okay, and we are going to demonstrate this in times to come. Because when all those on the left finally settle down from their violence, when this is all done and and, and our president is reelected and all that, okay? When, when it all comes down, they're going to be looking for help. Amen. And we need to be out there because they might kill themselves if we're not out there to give them the word to turn them around. Amen. The Holy Spirit through us. The Lord through us. Yes. Is there something you want to say, Josh? Um, you kind of hinted on it, Rabbi. Um, but the word Natsav, it, it means to stand. And when we look at it from the letter buildup, um, the noon means life, 
and the tzav means um, to uh, like like when we have a, it means, it means to, to command a sign mm -hmm. or to assign yeah mm -hmm. so you live a life that is assigned you right. live the life that you're supposed to live not and, the life you choose to live and and not only that but the word for commandment it's Allah it's connected yeah. okay really? following his instruction his ways. Okay. So a life it's like following his instructions are not like hard. We, you know, we, we have to get the word commandment out of our vocabulary. God does not command us. He says, choose with your free will to do my word. It's my instructions on how to live righteously. And they're spiritual. They're not physical. They're not do this or don't do that. God doesn't do that. If we're going to do his Torah, and follow his calendar and do all these things. It has to be out of our free will. He doesn't want robots. Mm -hmm. He wants us out of our own choice and free will. Because you know what? This is about knowing Yeshua. This is about knowing Jesus. Studying that word is about knowing Yeshua. That's the only reason I do it. That's the only reason we should do it. It's not because we can attain some kind of righteousness out of doing this or not doing that. You know what? God has a He has an order to things, okay? And there's things that please us in and things that don't, okay? Some of them, if we break them, is sin, okay? Many of them also, it, it may not be sin. Like, I'll give you an example. He's given us, and he said to, to Noah, you have clean, you have unclean, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, you can eat whatever you want. But God told them what was clean and what was unclean. So that, that means, with your free will, choose what pleases me. But it's not a sin. It wasn't a sin for him. Now, when he gave to Israel his law, he said, you can't eat this, don't eat this or eat that. It's more stricter. But it still should be, we should eat or not eat based on the commandment. We should want to know why. And that's been my motivation. And uh, one of these days we'll have a class again on, on the kosher laws. And, and you guys will understand it's deeper than what you think. It's not just mm -hmm. a bunch of can't eat that or don't eat that or eat this. You know, there's a reason for it. That that is one of the things that the Antichrist does is he, he tries to get people to eat what they shouldn't. But also, he wants to turn against the Jews. He wants to turn against the Christians. Okay, we're different. We're supposed to be different. We're not supposed to be like the world. He wants to tear us down. That will happen if, if the worst thing happened, which will not happen. Okay. Amen. I'm just saying that, that, that when evil rules, it's very bad for the righteous. But for the righteous, we have a standard. We will keep to that standard. Okay, God has given us his standard. We choose with our free will to follow it to know him. And that's the same thing with the kosher laws. Did you know that the kosher laws are prophetic? It says in Colossians 2, 16 to 17, they are a shadow of things to come. But we don't know how they're prophetic. And when you learn what they are, it will make you choose to eat what's right or not eat what's right. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Okay, so anyhow, going on with this. We're almost done. Uh, I, I really wanted you to see this about the glory. God is going to make us glorious in the coming days. When we empty ourselves of our flesh continuously, God is going to make his glory shine through us. It's going to increase. The light upon us is going to increase. And healings and signs and wonders, these things follow those who believe. These things are coming to us. They belong to us. Okay? They are coming back to us. Okay? So this is why even Yaakov was looking, uh, looking above. Now, next thing, I'm not going to go through all this because it, it would take too long. He goes to his... his uh, is it, what is it? His uncle? Right? His uncle. Yeah, I think it's his yeah. uncle. Uncle's house. <coughs> Laban. Yeah. And he begins, he, he gets, he, he, he gets, uh, he wants, his un uncle has a beautiful daughter named Raquel. Okay? <laughs> and he, you know, he falls in love with her. But there's an older sister named Lena. Okay? And he ends up, you know, serving his uncle Levon for seven years to get to get Rachel, but then he was cheated, kind of like uh, how they're trying to cheat in the election, but a little different, okay, much different. Okay. 
is cheated on the night of the wedding. He got a little too drunk and he woke up with Leah. Okay. <laughs> However, Leah, people say that she was ugly. That's not true. It says it, it, her eyes were weak because she was crying all the time. It's because she was living with people that worshiped other gods. And this is what the Jews say, by the way, the rabbis. That she was living with people who worship other gods, but she wanted the true God. Okay, well, that's what this, the reason why she cried a lot. But anyhow, so he ends up serving another seven years, even though he was given right after her wedding week, Leah's wedding week, she, he was given Raquel too, okay? And so he had to serve seven more years for Raquel, and then six more years for a total of 20 years. And then he finally leaves, it's time for him to go, okay? So I, I'm really covering that real quick. That takes us all the way, all the way over. And by the way, you can study this on your own. The building up of the house of Israel, all the children he had from the two wives, and they had, each wife had a, had a servant, uh, a female servant, and he ended up having to marry them to have children with them. So he had four wives, okay? But two main wives. And I'm not trying to promote having more than one wife. Okay? I'm just one wife is enough. And I'm very happy with what I have. I don't want another. Okay. Okay, so there's a whole prophecy in these 12 children, and you can see it there. You can read that on your own in the notes. And it, it like goes through a, through a lot. Okay. Um, it's time for Yaakov to come back. So we need to go to Genesis 30. 25. And it was when Raquel gave birth to Yosef. See, she was the last one. She, her, she could not have any children. I'm going to tell you something. Raquel may have been the prettiest one of the two, but she had a lot of idolatry in her heart. And it held her back from having babies. Okay. And and uh, but in the end, God saw her heart, so there must have been some repentance in her, and she had a child. And the name of the child was Yosef. And it was when Raquel had given birth to Yosef. Jacob said to Laban, "Send me, and I will go to my place, to my land." Isn't it interesting? It was connected to Yosef about going back to his land, and we know Yosef later would be the reason that, that Yaakov would have to leave the land to go to be protected during the time of drought and famine, which we're going to read about in the coming weeks. Okay. Uh, but here he's saying, it's time for me to go back because I'm remembering. Or maybe he's seeing something prophetically that's going to happen in the future. And I want to go back to that land. I don't want to be stuck outside of my land because Yaakov had a lot of dreams. This whole thing about dreams are going to come up again next week. The dreams continue. <laughs> okay. It's okay if you have dreams. And by the way, Kiss Love is a notorious one to have dreams. I don't know about you. I had a dream last night. I was at a Messianic conference. Okay. <laughs> you, know, and I, you know, but I was saying that people dream a lot during this time of the year. So if you're having a lot of dreams, don't be like freaked out. Oh my God, what's going on? I'm having a lot of dreams. <laughs> it's a month of dreaming. Okay, that's the month of Kiss Love. That's a part of it. Is it's the darkest time of year, and it's also a time where God implants stuff in us while we sleep. A lot of instruction. Okay. But anyhow, so give me my wives and my children, whom I have worked for you for them, and I will go. For you know my work that I have worked for you. But he said to him, Laban did. We're in, we're in chapter 30, verse 27. If now we, I have found favor in your eyes, I have learned by divination. Uh, Yehovah has blessed me on account of you. Now this is Laban. He was a idol worshiper. So he, he practiced the arts of witchcraft and all the different arts connected to it. So he knew he was blessed because Yehovah was with Yaakov. And he said, specify your weights to me and I will give it. But he said to him, you know the manner in which I work for you and the way in which your livestock were with me. For the little that you had before I came has birthed forth in abundance as Yehovah has blessed you with my coming. And now 
when will I do something for myself as well, for my house? Okay, now, there comes time for us to move on. You know, it's time for us. He's lived under this for so long. It's like, I have a whole house now. I got all these children. I got four wives. I got all these animals. <coughs> and he was going to get a lot more animals <laughs> to get out of there. Okay, but uh, anyhow, uh, so, uh, <coughs> okay, Yo Yosef's birth signals return to the land of promise. Yosef will become symbolic of, of Messiah. Later on, you're going to see in the next weeks that Yosef is a Messiah, a type of Messiah. Today, the Jews have a teaching that there are two messiahs that would come. Uh, they had it back then in the time of the Messiah, when he actually came. But they didn't click to it, they didn't get it, okay? Messiah comes to suffer, and then he comes victorious. And the, the suffering of Messiah is a relationship to Yosef, which we'll read about next week. Basically, all the suffering that Yosef would have to endure, and we'll read about that starting next week. But there's the Messiah ben Yosef, or Messiah son of Joseph, and Messiah son of David, who comes as king. Messiah came the first time to suffer. Okay? Thanks, Josh. Okay, so. So, Yosef would later be exiled by his brothers and end up in Egypt. Yosef stands for the exile. Israel being exiled is like Joseph when they had to leave the land. Okay, when the Jews would have to leave to go to be with Joseph. Messiah Yeshua was exiled to death by his brothers in Israel. After which Yosef being restored to his brothers, Yeshua being restored in his resurrection and later to all of Israel when he returns for his kingdom you don't understand, the story of Yosef in the Bible is the clearest, most divine pictures of Messiah. Because you're gonna, we're going to read over these next weeks. The suffering of Joseph and then being becoming second in command of all of Egypt is a type and shadow of Messiah suffering and then becoming second in to God himself over the whole earth. So this is repeated, you know, this is going to be the story that we're going to read over these next weeks about the life of Joseph. Okay. So it's, it's going to be pretty exciting. So there's restoration, though. See, here, there, there's going to be exile, but there's going to be restoration. Okay. So Israel was exiled for almost 2,000 years, and now they came back in 1948. Okay, do you see what's happening? The, there's this pattern that continues on. Uh, we have had bad presidents, okay, and then we have a good one, and and now the enemy's trying to, to, to take that away, but it ain't gonna happen yet. Amen. We're supposed to have a good one for a while, thank you, Lord, and maybe even for a lot more th than that after the four years. Yes, Lord, yes. amen. But we're going. We, why? Because this is time of harvest. Yes. We have to go. We have a lot of work to do before. The false messiah comes and the antichrist. It's not supposed to come yet. How is there going to be a harvest if there's hell going on on the earth? We have to have the time of harvest first. I don't know how many years that's going to be, but I don't think it's just another four years. I think it's more than that. That's why I'm saying all this is going to come out. Okay, So I'm just telling you. And it, all this that happened with Joseph, you're going to see is similar. Okay, Restoration. There was trouble, there was exile, and then there's restoration. Okay, the people of God are going to rise up. We might be a remnant, though, but I don't know. I think a bigger remnant than we think. Okay? <laughs> but we're going to rise up. Um, let's go to page 10. And we're going to go to page 31. So, you know, it was time for him to leave. Okay? And this is what happens right after he leaves. And I want to show you something. Uh, 31, verse... One. 
Then he heard the words of the sons of Laban saying, Jacob has taken all. See, Jacob ended up leaving without letting his father-in-law know. And he says, I, I, I can't handle it. He's not going to let me go. He's going to stop me. He's going to take everything that I have. So he left when his father and his, and, and his bro, uh, brothers-in-laws left. Okay? And in verse, in chapter 31, verse 1, and he heard the words of the sons of Laban saying, Jacob has taken all. Now they're talking to their father. Jacob has taken all that belongs to our father, and from that which belongs to our father, he amassed all this wealth. Jacob discerned the countenance of Laban, and indeed it was not with him as yesterday and the day before. And Jehovah said to Yaakov, Return to the land of your forefathers and to the birthplace, and I will be with you. Yaakov sent and, and called Raquel, Leah, to the field, to his flock, and he said to them, Discern, do I, the countenance of your father, that it is not toward me as yesterday and the day before, but the God of my father was with me. Now, in the book of Exodus, it says, let me tell you something. Through the time that Joseph was there and, and Israel was in Goshen, in the land of Egypt, they lived happily. They lived good. Yeah. But what happened is a pharaoh arose and it says who did not know Joseph. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Well, here he's noticing that the person who he's been with for 20 years, their countenance has changed toward him. So now someone has, has rose that, that these same people are going to cause him a problem. And here's the beginning of anti-Semitism. Throughout history, when anti-Semitism rises up, it means it's time for my people to go back. Because God is not giving us favor where we're at. We need to go back. It hasn't happened yet in the United States. But I'll tell you something. If the worst case scenario would happen, which is not going to happen, no, if Biden, you. it would mean that the Jews would have to leave this country. We'd have to get out of here. Yes. Okay. But it's not time yet. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. It's not going to happen that way. It's not time yet. At some point in the future, it may happen, but I don't think it's in the near future. I think it's soon, but not like in the near future. Soon could be maybe 20 years, 24 years, I don't know. Okay, but it's soon. But it's not yet. Okay. So. What drives our people back to the land? Laban shearing his sheep indicated, because this is what all this happened when he was shearing his sheep, indicated it was in the spring when Yaakov left Laban. Isn't it interesting? The children of Israel left in the springtime too. The spring is the month of Aviv, the month of Passover. It's when, it's when Jacob left his, his family that turned against him, his, his relatives. Okay, So think about that. It's the same timing. So that means, well, we also know something else, that in the book of Revelation, we, we have a pretty good understanding, at least we do. Maybe you guys don't know it all yet, but uh, we know that when the false Messiah takes power and tries to stop Israel and tries to kill and starts to kill the believers, it's around Passover. It's the same time. Okay? And he says, you go away. Don't stay here. This time it's in Israel. He said, you go to the mountains. Don't stay here. Yeshua even said, when you see the abomination of desolation, don't even go back into your houses. This is the time when they're running for their lives again. But this isn't this time it isn't to the land of Israel. It's from the land of Israel to the wilderness to be protected for the whole great tribulation. Okay. But anyhow, uh, so I just want you to see. This is another reason we know when it's time for all the people, and not just the Jews, but all you who are believers, it might be time for you to go. I don't know, okay? Uh, or to be a light. See, there's one of two, two places. We as Jews have to go, <laughs> okay? But the, the, as believers, now I'm a believer too, so I'm in both camps, okay? So as believers, it means that we have to stand for God, even if it means losing our lives. We get to go to to heaven. Okay. Yeah. So what I'm saying is that that we there one or two maybe as a Messianic Jew I might be called to die, or then I might be called to go back. When the time comes for for the Jews to leave, we're gonna know. It's gonna be all worked out. God's gonna work out the time. 
Me and Christina had a dream one night that we were going back to Israel, and in the dream, it was under perilous times. In the dream. Mm. So, wow. but I, I don't think we're at that time yet. Okay, that's why it's exciting. You know, the days of rain. You know, like, you know, you're waiting on God. What's it gonna happen? It's gonna go this way. It's gonna go that way. But we already know which way it's going. Okay, it's gonna go for the good. Okay? Amen. It's not time yet. Amen. And we'll all. We're gonna. One day we're gonna be here and we're gonna be celebrating and we're gonna be so happy. And we're going to know, we knew it, God told us, and we knew it. You know, but that's why we can't doubt. We can't be discouraged. Right. Amen. Because when that time comes, we're going to be guilty. We're going to ask God to forgive us for not believing him. I don't want to be in that place. I want to just believe God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Okay, so uh, after, after this, he ends up believing, and it, uh, God speaks to Laban. And tells him in a dream, you better not touch Yaakov. He's running, and they're trying to catch up to him to, to hurt him, okay, or to stop him. And the bond catches up, and, and Jacob talks to him, and uh, he said, God stopped me from hurting you, okay. And then he tells him, well, you weren't nice to me. <laughs> you know, they, they talked, they finally had a talk, and they made an agreement, okay, and in that agreement, uh, they made it was they had a set of stones set up as a witness to to this agreement that you know he's not going to come after Le Laban didn't want him to cheat on on his on his daughters okay and and made him agree to that and you know he said oh, that's I don't have a problem with that he said well you better not chase after me either okay so so he's coming back to Israel okay and uh, but he's he, let me tell you something, just let me bring you up to date. When Raquel left, he took the gods, she took the gods of her father. They were called, uh, no, huh? Teraphim, I think. Teraphim. Okay. These are household gods. And you know what? When Israel left Egypt, they had gods with them. <laughs> it's, it's, there's similarities here, okay? You, we got to get the gods out of us so we can be used. In Raquel's case, Yaakov, you know, uh, when my Bible was talking, he said, why did you take my gods? And he said, I don't know anything about your gods because Rachel did it secretly and kept it hidden. And when Laban was going through his camp, Looking for his gods, she said, the way a woman is upon me, she was sitting on a, a container that had the gods of her father, and, uh, the false gods, and, and she said, the way a woman are upon me. And you don't touch women in, in their time, in their period, okay? So he left her alone, okay? But Yaakov said, whoever has your gods, may they die. Guess what happened? She died on the way. We'll read about that next week. And it's because of a pronouncement. He didn't know. Yaakov didn't know that his own wife. See, pretty on the surface is not deeper than the surface. Right, right. Leah, Leah's heart was right toward God. But uh, the heart of Raquel wasn't. Now, at the end, she repented. And we have reasons to believe in her repentance because of what would happen with Joseph and with the other son, Benjamin which has to do with Messiah. Yosef, a type of shadow of Messiah. Benjamin means son of my right hand, which is Messiah. Okay, so anyhow, uh, just to bring you up to, up to date on that, that brings us to the very end. Okay, look at chapter 32. Remember the whole thing started with an encounter on, uh, on Mount Moriah where there were angels going up and down and he had a dream of a ladder, right? But look at Genesis 32. And Laban awoke early in the morning. He kissed his sons and his daughters, and he blessed them. And Laban went and returned to his place. And Yamakov went on his way and encountered to him. Here's the word encounter again. Angels of God. He encountered angels of God. And Yamakov said when he saw them, a camp of God is this. A camp of Elohim is this. So we call the name of that place Mahmoud. 
Machanaim, okay? Uh, Machanaim is on, is on the last page, page 11. It means two camps. Okay, so it starts and ends with an encounter, okay? And he goes back to that place where he had the first encounter. It says, when Yaakov was going to Haran, as per his parents' counsel, first he has an encounter with God on Mount Moriah, where Abraham nearly offered up Yitzchak, where the future temples would, would be, and where Yeshua went to the cross, he had a dream of a spiral ladder leading to heaven. In his dream, God reiterates the promises and blessings he gave to Abraham and Yitzchak. And every one of us need to have an encounter with God. I told you about that. And like Abraham, following his leading, leaving everything familiar and, and compromised. We leave everything behind and we move heaven. We're looking for our encounter with God. Okay. Then he appoints, he anoints the rock, Evan, and use it as a pillow, as a monument, symbolic of Yeshua, our Messiah. He makes six points, a six-pointed vow upon the monument and calls the place House of God for its future meeting. He then goes to Haran, to his mom's brother. He works 14 years for two wives. Then he, he only wanted, no, he only wanted Ra Raquel and another six years for Laban's flocks. During this time, building the house of Israel. Okay, and his, he has his last encounter at this mountain, and God later is going to bring him back to Mount Moriah. Or it might have happened in here. I, I, I think he has an encounter. He ends up back at that same mountain. Okay. The thing is, why, why did we read all this? Why did we go through all this? Everything about this, the Lord said at the beginning of this year, it's, it's like it's, it's time for us to go back to being in glory. It's time for us to get become a prophetic people again. Prophetic and in glory. That's what God wants. Listen, if, if, wow. if you're satisfied with religion, I can't do anything. No one can. God can't even do anything because that's our free will. We have to be hungry and thirsty and desperate. It's time to get more. It's time to go after more. More of him, less of us. It's time for encounter. It's for, for in an encounter, we get to know ourselves. We get to know him, we get to know ourselves. So I want to get to know him, and I want to get to know myself, and I want to move on, because he has made a promise to all of us who are believers. He says, these things will follow them that believe. They will cast out demons. They will raise the dead. Where is that? We're not supposed to follow us as believers. Where is the signs and wonders and miracles? We, we need that. It's, and guess what? We are coming into that now. It is the time for that. And I believe the Lord has, has, me, has me specifically on this path because I believe he's leading us all into a whole new way. way. And I shouldn't say it's a new way. It's really an ancient way. But it's the way that we were supposed to be in from the beginning that was lost. When, when, guess what? When the church was compromised. When was it compromised? Almost at the beginning. 325 common era when the end of the persecution and started, happened. Under Constantine. Constantine and the church fathers at the time, whoever they were, okay, they began the compromise. And the compromise, it, it was like a, if you, if you were to dissolve the power of God. The power of God got dissolved and weakened. And they compromised so that they would have peace, they wouldn't have persecution anymore. The price was too great. And the church got filled with all sorts of false doctrines. They, they worshiped these huge cathedrals were built. It's all Roman, okay? And, and our whole church system has come out of that. This whole Sunday worship, everything, all of it came out of that. So we're going back. Now, I'm not telling you that we're going to end Sunday worship and all that. That's up to God. Okay. What I'm saying is that it has to start with us individually be returning back to what God intended us to be. So we'll, we'll end on that note. Abba, in the name of Yeshua, Lord, I ask that you would just help us. Seal us, Lord. We know we're, everything's returning back. Abba, we're returning back to the glory that you had. You, you have a glorious bride, Abba. We, we are not shining the way we should. 
and we want to shine, Abba. We want to become what you intended us to be, Lord. We are your bride, Abba, and we should look, look no less than you, Lord, because we are a reflection of you. You're coming for a bride. You are equally yoked. And so you are glorious, so shall we be glorious, Lord. We will be a glorious bride without spot or blemish, Abba. I know it may take some time, Abba. We, we want to see the church that is triumphant, the believers that are triumphant, the ecclesia, the congregation of God. Lord, I thank you for this teaching about Yaakov, Lord. He, he, wanted, he encountered you, Lord. May we all have that encounter with you yes. in our own time, in, in our own ways, yes. even together, Abba. We saw, we see in the book of Acts, Lord, that one person has a tongue, another person has a translation, another person has a prophetic word. Abba, the fivefold ministry needs to be restored in its fullness, the way you intended it to be. And Abba, I ask, Lord, that, that all these things get restored. Lord, we're talking about it, we're beginning, we're living it. Even every day, we don't know. It's like there's, there's like this, like not knowing right now, right? But we know that you're in control. We know that you're going to bring everything. You've spoken through your prophets how it's all going to turn out. And you've spoken to us too, Lord. I haven't forgotten First Kings 1, Lord. The Adonijah is out there, but you're going to defeat Adonijah through, the, through Solomon, through King Solomon. Thank you, Abba. We are like King Solomon, Lord. We also are standing with our president, Lord, that is after your heart. Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Abba, Lord, for the man, for the for the Trump man, Abba, for the for the man like a Trump, Lord. Yeah. Yeah. And Lord, I thank you, Abba, that he will have an encounter with you too. Because well, when I talk about encounters, it starts at the top. So that means he's got a, an encounter coming. Our president's going to have an encounter with you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's going to go all the way down. And it's going to affect your entire church. And we are truly going to become one, Lord, because that's what you intended. So that the world would know that Yeshua was sent, as it says in John 17. So that we would be one, Lord. Make the Messianics one. Make the Christians one. Let all these denominational differences would end and we would be unified as one people. Because that's where your power is. That's where your power is. Is that we're one and we have all things in common. Lord, only you can do that. It'll be a miracle. We will see it. We will see it, Abba. We will see things that the prophets long to see. We will see things that even the believers in the first century long to see. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba. What you're doing to the earth is so great and so wondrous. And thank you for allowing us to be participants with it. Lord, we want to work the fields. We want to bring in the harvest. We want to be co-laborers with our Messiah. Lord, give us the words to tell people in love, in truth, in, in compassion. Lord, not in accusation, not in accusing. Oh, but we are not the accuser of the brethren. We have an accuser. Lord, one of these days he'll be gone. He'll be dealt with. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Abba. Lord, guide us all. Protect us, Lord, in this hour. Protect our president. Yes, Lord. Protect that White House, Lord. Protect yes. all of those who are standing with our president and the yes. Congress and the yes, Senate, Lord. Lord, and all yeah. their families, Lord. Protect all our loved ones right now from this virus, Abba. Yes, let us overcome it, Lord. You are the miracle worker, God. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. Abba, we want to see you do mighty things. You are in charge of Kol Haruach. It is your voice, the voice of your spirit, Abba. In the name of Yeshua. Yes, Lord. In Sayahova, Panavaleha, they are seven echa. Shalom. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his face toward you and give you peace. In the name of our Prince of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus on the side, the soon coming king, the, the beginning and the end, the olive and the top, the Alpha and the Omega. Blessing for the Torah. Baruch Atah Yehovah Elohim Melech Olam Asher Natan Lanu Tovah Temet 